we've got our environment up and running, let's talk about writing our first transform. It's going to be very easy. So we've talked about the entities or the objects uh, in Maltigo. We talked about the transforms. So let's talk about that for a second. The transforms are really neat and that these are scripts you run against the entities. What's really useful to us is these transforms work off standard in, standard out. Or, as you're probably aware, that is command line. So, what that means is I'm not tethered to any particular language. If something works off the command line, then Maltigo can interact with it effectively. It means if you've got a an ips or an ids with an API that you can call, you can wire it into Maltigo. Uh, but today we're going to be using Python. But you can use PowerShell, you can use Bash, you can use Windows command line, Ruby, whatever language you like. So let's clean this up. Open a new graph and let's work with a phrase object. Which is nice, easy. And let's open up an editor and create our first transform. So I'm going to put my scripts under documents and scripts. And we're going to call this dev .py. And for our first transform, all I'm going to do is print out to the screen. And I'm going to print an XML formatted message that declares this is a Maltigo message, form response message. It's going to declare it's got entities. Then I've kind of broken it down here. I've got a basic entity where I declare the type, the value, the weight, close off the entity object but one a little bit more complex here. This is saying it's an entity type of person. I don't declare a value up here, but then what I do is I add additional fields underneath. So I can set multiple fields on any entity. We'll see this in action. So I'm gonna save this. And in Linux, you need to mark things as executable. And even before we run this in Maltigo, let's go um, so when I run it in Python, as you can see, all it's doing is it's printing out an XML format to the screen. That's all we're accomplishing. And before we go any further, let me show you some documentation so you know the, the format is very simple and the code will be in the notes, but um, if you go to Perturba's site, they do have documentation under, let's see, under tutorials. There we go, under local transforms. This sort of explains local transforms, how they're executed, and in here you can kind of see what some of the, the XML options are.
so that's a good source document. Anyway, back to what we're doing. Now we want to attach the Python script we saved, um, but make it a transform that we can connect to an object. So I'm going to go to my transform tab, manage transforms, create a new local transform. just a name and description. It needs a unique transform ID and that is if I'm going to call this programmatically this will be what it's called. And then under input entity type we're going to tell it what we want to connect this to, what entity we want to attach the transform to. I said we were going to go with a phrase. That's good. All right. So for the command we're going to use Python. Dev.py, then the working directory for our scripts. Should be that. And that's really all we need. Now, this block down here is. is worth noting, although it's not important to us at the moment, it will be soon, but this gives us the command line format that will be executed when we run the transform. So it's going to run python dev.py, then it's going to have the entity value, which is sort of what you'll see on the graph, and then you've got, as it says here, field1 is equal to field one value, field two is equal to field two value. So later on, when we're running transforms off of more complex entities, this is how that information will be pushed to the command line. We'll see more of that later. So now, if I right click phrase, we've got our NX dev transform and then if I left click this it will run that transform and return those objects and as you can see down here we've got the debug window open this was the return from our script and then just like we told it to do it returned a phrase object with a value and it returned a person object thing um, I think that's worth mentioning. Let's go back to our there we go. Let's go back to our script. Now this is the hard way of doing it where I've sort of printed out that XML. We're going to use the Python libraries to make things a little bit easier. So if you remember when we set up our environment, I downloaded a file. Draw a copy into the scripts area here. We'll allow that to be executed. statements. This will be much easier. Okay. So from Maltigo transform import everything. I set up me as an object. It's a Maltrigo transform object. Now I just have to add entities. So I say me add entity phrase and then put the value here. 
I set up another object um, as an entity of a person and then I can add additional fields. So this, which is obviously much simpler than what we had before, um, accomplishes exactly the same thing. And then we return output and that's the end of it. So let's save this. We're going to rerun our transform and we should end up with exactly the same result. The takeaway here though is rather than me having to sort of do a lot of string handling and then print out that and do all the headers and the declarations, really it just works in works into me, add entity, and then do whatever I want, or me add additional fields. We just give it the data and then tell it to return output and it knows how to format the XML and, and output it to command line or in this case back to Maltigo. Let's minimize this. We'll close this out. Let's rerun the transform. And it works just fine. Just for fun, for the phrase value, we could put anything. Um, Hello world. Now, and that's how to use the Python libraries.